My art is, how, how would you say, it's not minimalist, but it's based really on a kind of uh, mathematical starting point. They're cups blown in thin color and then picked up one in the other one so that they become concentric. And then the mathematics says that if you distort them and move them and stretch them and so on, that the relationships all stay the same. I'm very interested in the color, but I'm more interested in the, in the, in the strength of the form, the, the bending of the glass, the, uh, the inherent uh, frozen movement in the piece. Being reared in Corning, New York, I had visited the factory from age six on, but I always thought it was impossible to do it on your own. The equipment was too complicated and so on and so on. Well, after a visit to Murano in 58, I realized that I could do it, but I got thrown out of most of the factories, so I couldn't uh, learn there. But I came back and I experimented with glass in my studio. And uh, by 1962, I was ready to start. I had no intentions of keeping secrets or anything else. My intention was to get a lot of people going with the material. And to really, I, I was a kind of evangelist for the material, for the medium. So at any rate, I had this workshop, which was quite successful, and we then began to teach glass in the fall of 1962 at the University of Wisconsin. So that was the beginning. Now it's a, quite a different world. Of course, it's always not nice to have the reputation as an innovator. And uh, as an innovator, you, can, you have a certain claim to fame. But in the long run, uh, your work has to stand on its own as a unique and uh, fine piece of art. No matter who started it or who did it or when it was done or how it was done, the piece itself is the, end, is the, is the final arbiter. Whatever title you give me, I stand or fall in the end by my work.